because the, the, it, it is a quite a complex issue. Um, and most of our work uh, focuses on uh, rural areas and uh, also with the problem of undernutrition and stunting because you know that this is really still a very acute problem for the country uh, affecting at least 45 percent of children which is almost one in uh, every second child. Um, so uh, here this is a very, very uh, interesting and exciting partnership. I think uh, one that is very new and innovative. Um, and when I met uh, Anna Taylor, who's uh, an old colleague and friend uh, in maybe two years ago, I think, I was thinking back uh, maybe in 2016. Um, and uh, looked at, uh, you know, and was presented all these facts of how we are uh, facing a kind of dual burden of malnutrition. So malnutrition is really, in very simple terms, I'm not a nutritionist at all, and I feel we're very nervous sitting uh, next to Anna, but uh, is the wrong kind of nutrition, so the, uh, which leads to both the whole undernutrition uh, and stunting and wasting that we see, uh, as well as uh, obesity and overnutrition, which of course has very severe health impacts. And at the Tata Trust, so we have a big focus on health, big focus on education, water and sanitation, livelihoods. Uh, these are all areas of work, but health is a very big issue for us. And um, NCDs is getting higher and higher, and nutrition obviously has a big impact on that. Um, so looking at this and looking then at the whole Smart Cities Initiative, uh, and as, um, uh, as uh, Dr. Anjali just mentioned, Smart Cities is not just about infrastructure, that it is really about people and human beings and everything else supports that uh, and enables and fosters uh, growth and, and development, which must uh, include issues such as nutrition and health. So. I think that the, the Smart Cities initiative was announced and within that the context uh, when I spoke to Anna and Food Foundation has been doing some really exciting and interesting work in the UK and this suggestion of a twinning of cities was suggested um, and the UK department had also signed, the UK government had signed up with uh, India on the Smart Cities initiative. And uh, Pune was very high on the list because, you know, we, we work in Mar at the, for the Tata Trust, uh, Maharashtra, we are situated, Bombay is the headquarters, situated in Maharashtra. Pune government was extremely um, proactive, etc., as compared to the other uh, governments. I would really like to thank you for that. And then Birmingham is also uh, a city that had done interesting work. Um, and uh, Tata has a presence in the UK. Tata Motors is, uh, the, I mean, their Jaguar Land Rover here, Tata Motors is situated there. Uh, so we thought this would be a very exciting uh, opportunity. So it's really good to be here. I know the Pune delegation visited uh, in the UK a few months ago, and very good to have Birmingham uh, uh, government representatives and see uh, what will come out of this, because I think it will be uh, to, to develop this as a kind of model around nutrition and food and then share it uh, with the central government. So I'd actually asked for an appointment to meet with uh, the minister, Hardeep Singh Puri, to, so that he knows. But he was traveling, unfortunately, but perhaps we can meet with the secretary. But as we go along, uh, it would be very interesting and useful to see what, what comes out of it and the learnings. So just a... Um, um, a couple of points in terms of looking at what we're doing over the next few days. I think that uh, it was mentioned uh, creating a conducive policy environment for healthy and safe eating out options for people on a low income. Uh, so people with a high income also eat uh, badly often, uh, but our focus is on uh, people on a low income, the majority of the city and the, the kind of uh, uh, people that we need to uh, target and, and inform, which also supports the local economy of the city. So uh, in terms of smart nutrition, I mean to break that down and understand what does that mean and what are the choices that we as people are making when we go out and buy food. And more and more, uh, we are going out and buying food or getting food in or whether we work. And, and therefore, what is available as a city 
like what is it that we are making as city government? What are the regulations, policies that we are, you are making? Because we're not government, so we can't make any of these policies um, to enable uh, that or to uh, enable good choices for people rather than promote bad choices for people. Uh, so, you know, and that could be at a range of things, you know, we're not even looking at alcohol, for instance, now, but, um, and what are the sorts of things that we could do? And I, what struck me is that we should not, uh, like the West is now introducing, because they're suffering from the high intake of junk food, processed food, etc. They have to kind of take very strong measures, like I believe there was even a sugar tax uh, introduced. Uh, and we, we, sh we are at the point where we could go that way, we're veering towards it, but we could do something to correct it, both in terms of policy and both in terms of informing, uh, you know, sort of uh, information campaigns for people to know that this is really bad and unhealthy for you, whether it's Coca-Cola or processed food or mac. This is really, really bad and unhealthy for you. Not, not just, uh, it's cheap, maybe, but the things like more local options, whether it's poha, whether it's local vegetables, curry, are much better for you um, and much tastier, honestly, uh, than these things. And with the whole issue of plastic, yesterday I was asking, because I live in Delhi, uh, and I was in the Bombay offices yesterday, uh, what a, how is this plastic ban, which is a very... Uh, you know, it's an uh, amazing thing that Maharashtra has uh, introduced recently, this plastic ban. And all my colleagues said, yes, it's okay, we don't know, it's going okay. But actually, all this junk food people, they're exempt. And they are the people who should be actually uh, the most targeted. Now, there might be some compulsions, but it's something definitely to look at um, and consider. Uh, what are the things we can do around uh, junk food and especially the advertising. So I think in London they're looking at advertising, banning advertising of junk food and public transport, etc. So that advertising and that marketing for children, they kind of target children and then children put pressure on parents. Parents should always act in the best interest of the children. They don't need to give in, but they often give in because they may not know better. Uh, so. Uh, you know, it's 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 so bad for you that it should probably come with some warnings, I think. But anyhow, so so that is an I think an area that you could certainly look at using city level data. So I think Pune has a very strong data collection system, but perhaps looking at it in terms of nutrition uh, as well as the other areas that you discuss. And I think that uh, the trust have uh, supported a person in the Pune Municipal Commissioner's office to ah here yeah to look at data, so maybe we can put some focus on that and link it with uh, the health issues, um, as well as su support of uh, home cooking skills, which we have much more strongly, as you pointed <coughs> out. But again, it may be in danger. It's a gendered issue. I don't know in uh, Maharashtra if the men cook uh, or, or not, but uh, uh, certainly looking especially at working with uh, children and in schools would be um, important. Um, so I just look forward to the learnings from these days and getting, I think one of the things is that what is very important is citizen engagement and working with the people to get their thoughts and inputs and working with other departments as well. So we look forward to uh, hearing your inputs and to taking forward uh, this partnership between uh, Pune and Birmingham. And thank you very much for having us here.